Okay, ladies and gents, are we live? It is your favorite Asian robot right here, and hopefully I'll be your favorite Dark Tide partner. Now, today, the walk, the people's champion, has to apologize. I am really sorry, guys. I, I know it's a bit weird to start off a video with an apology, but I'm really sorry that I couldn't put out the gun cycle build today. Um, I am not very well. I did not manage to sleep last night. I don't know why, but I had some bout of insomnia that caused me a lot of problems. So I didn't have the um, necessary zeal to put together the gun cycle build today. But I absolutely promise to deliver tomorrow. I hope you can forgive me for this delay. Instead, what I'm producing today is a video that I think is a bit problematic. And that's why I wanted to do this video today. Um, if you guys have seen this video above, this is my video made 10 months ago. It actually shows every Psyker 4 staff in the game at the time. But this was done 10 months ago, literally during like practically the... Um, the uh, early access beta phase before Dark Tide actually dropped. Um, and I have to tell you that it does not contain correct information anymore, yet a lot of people are still referring to this video above. So I'm redoing this video entirely so that you guys can get the information about the four staffs as they are in the game now so without further ado let me go through every single four staff in the game now to make this test fair what i have done is first of all i have removed all of my talents so there are no talents that will impact this demonstration at all and more importantly we are going to use gray four staffs okay no mods nothing like that just the raw base game so you understand how each staff works and what you're going to be seeing when you use these staffs okay assuming no additions and things like that my cures and the rest don't impact the staffs at all Neither do my melee weapon. I know I pronounce it melee, but you know, whatever. Um, I know it's melee, but still, melee weapon, okay? So, yes, um, none of this will impact on the staffs at all. So, we're going to go with that, and I'm going to show you guys how every single four staff in the game functions. First of all, disappearing cam. Okay, now that I've done, <laughs> I'm finished disappearing, let me start off with the Trauma Force staff. I've tried to roll one that has generally decent stats, all right? Back when I first made that video, we didn't have that feature. Okay, so the Trauma staff comes with a primary fire. That is the usual uh, Psychic Bolt, all right? You'll see this on the Surge staff as well as the Void Strike staff. This can strike enemy weak points and cause weak point damage, all right? This is a Damnation level Meat Grinder. Um, it has roughly, if you look at it, right... The damage across the board, okay, for this one, let's inspect it right now. Scroll, 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 inspect. Okay, if you look at the attack breakdown, the primary staff attack um, suffers against Carapace Armor but and Unyielding, but does relatively decent damage across the board to Flak, Infested, Unarmored, and Maniac, all right? You will actually see this if you... And we will, after this, strike Carapace Armor. The secondary action is generally best against Unyielding and Maniac targets, but does very well against Armored targets, poorly against Infested targets. Okay? In fact, Unarmored, Unyielding, Maniac all take the same amount of damage. Carapace and Flak take the same amount of damage. So in general, only Infested has less damage from the uh, Trauma Staff Explosion. Okay? The special action is, of course, to melee strike with your staff. Please do not use this in combat unless you... You're memeing on the lowest difficulty. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at see if this is true. Yep. Striking Carapace does pretty much nothing. You won't get through a Bulwark Shield either. But if you happen to strike its head, you can still do unyielding damage. All right. Against Carapace Armor, not very much. Against Flak Armor, a little more decent. Okay. Not the greatest, but a little more decent. All right. Unarmored, flak, you can see you can see the rest, right? Okay, that's it for your primary fire. The secondary fire charges up a AoE circle, alright? And allows you to explode your enemies. Now, enemies in the center of the blast take the most damage. So if you got an enemy on the outer edge right there, you see it only took 24 damage, that flak armor, but this mauler took a lot more. So if the enemy is just on the outer edge right there. All right, it's not going to take very much damage, especially if it's outside of the blast radius. However, anything inside the blast radius will explode. All right, how much of the blast radius is inside 
Well, if you measure it carefully, it is, um, it is a bit uneven. All right, so if you look at this like edge right there uh, at its feet, this guy is not taking much damage, but if you were to be slightly within, all right, he would take full damage. So I would say measure it as whatever's inside the outer edge. That would be the smartest way of doing things. However, the damage drastically increases the longer you charge. So having a good charge time on this is very important, especially if you want to actually break down your maulers. All right, as you can see, a damnation mauler doesn't take much damage. At base and without a lot of other improvements, such as perks, blessings, criticals, all this, there isn't very much damage being dealt by the trauma staff. It's great for throwing the enemies around, but it's a little bit of a control staff. And right now in the game, I am going to go as far as to say it is currently the weakest staff in the game, simply because every other staff does far more damage than it. And it takes a while to charge and it's tough to aim. Also, the trauma staff currently has bugs where if you have a different level, like on a staircase or whatever, it targets below the staircase. This is the same problem seen with the Telekine shield. And hopefully this, this uh, will be patched in future. But this is a current problem with the trauma staff. And that is why I do not recommend using the trauma staff at all in combat. You will actually do better with the surge staff, which does basically what the trauma staff does. It's anti-armor. Decent crowd control, and it charges pretty fast as well. In fact, that's the next staff we're going to look at. Let's take a look at the search staff next. Okay, here we go. So, coming back to my inventory. The surge staff, which we're going to use, is a fresh new one that I just plucked out here. Okay, it's critical bonus. Actually, do we have a better one? Yeah, I have a better one here. It's got a lower charge rate, but it doesn't really matter. Charge rate shouldn't impact it that much, right? Yeah, let's use this one. Okay, so do do note that if you get a proper charge rate on it, and I do recommend getting a high charge rate, um, it will charge faster than what you're about to see here, okay? The Surge Staff... Oops, sorry, I should go do the attack breakdown first, right? Silly, silly me. The Surge Staff that you're seeing here has the same primary action as the uh, Trauma Staff, but the secondary action is unique in that now it does even damage everywhere across the board except for carapace armor so it is highly recommended that if you want to use the surge staff in combat please put a bonus to carapace armor now although there is a weak spot and critical damage being listed you cannot actually hit a weak spot with the um secondary action and i will happily prove this in a moment some people still think that you can some people have talked to me about headshotting with this i'm here to tell you that it is impossible to do so if anyone can produce evidence that they can please submit a video on youtube i would love to see it because it should not be possible um in the regular game okay primary action can indeed hit headshots weak spots all this kind of thing and it can crit as well the secondary action cannot but it can crit all right so just be aware of that the special action is, of course, your staff swings, which you really shouldn't do unless you enjoy looking like a moron in combat, all right? Please don't do that, all right? Okay, great. So, the primary attack is this. Same old, same old. However, the search staff features a higher crit rate. Now, against carapace armor targets, as you can see, your lightning will strike the body. It will strike the body no matter where you aim. Let's try aiming above this mauler. Do you see Do you see the sparks around the character? This means that the surge staff is going to hit that character. Let me try and show you. If I, if I move back here so that the animation is less distorted, do you see the sparks around the mauler? That means the surge staff is going to go for him. Watch. Okay, and it missed right there. This is also a little bit of a bug. If you aim in a weird way, the search staff doesn't hit. But in general, if you aim up, all right, the search staff should hit the first target. Now, the search staff naturally, assuming no talent points, now you know that we haven't, we don't have any talent points, it hits two targets. There is currently a bug with the search staff where, okay, and I've had a couple people tell me about this. Well, look, listen, I get it. But if we go down here and you take lightning storm, now this is unintended. Increases the number of times your smite jumps by one. It'll actually give the surge staff an extra jump as well, but it does not improve your damage numbers. Let's try. Take note that the first target takes 804, 133, and 33 down there. Alright, so the third target's not even going to be CC'd. There is no point in taking this adjustment just for your surge staff. Don't take smite just because you want to play the surge staff. It's not going to help you. It is not going to CC a multitude of enemies. It is not actually going to do anything at all. It will hit three targets but it will not actually do anything beyond that. So once again, back to zero talents. Under zero talents, it will hit two targets. The second target takes much less damage, 
but both will be sort of CC. All right. But keep in mind that you cannot hit a weak spot. It will always hit the body no matter where you aim, no matter how hard you try and go. Okay, it will not hit the head. And in general, you want to be aiming loosely at the target. Otherwise, your aim, your aim, like you can't just aim like this and hope to hit a target. It won't do that. All right. It will fire generally where your cursor is. So please keep that in mind and don't just blind fire. Yes, it does have a bit of auto aim. You don't need to be so on target. Okay, a little bit off will still hit him, but you cannot hit the head. Okay, I hope this is clear. All right, that is it for the Surge Staff. What is the Surge Staff used for? Basically, um, the Surge Staff is used mostly as a quick response, anti-target, anti-single target weapon. It is very high damage against most targets, including Carapace Armored targets. And with the right perks and blessings, you can absolutely shatter these dudes. All right, with the right talents and all that, you can shatter a uh, crusher in about two to three shots that's how fast it'll go in the field and that's how devastating it can be with the right perks and the right blessings so do take note of that um if you don't do that if you don't have the right perks and blessings you're just using a gray it'll take you about in damnation about five shots to even kill a mauler which has about 2400 hit points so just be aware of that and because it doesn't exactly deal extra damage to the secondary target um you, you won't be getting much results without the right build on the Surge Staff. So this is why the right build is very important. Okay, the Surge Staff is overall a useful weapon, but it needs to be used in a proper manner. So understanding it and using an appropriate build with it is the best way to play the Surge Staff. And that's how you do well in general with the Surge Staff. Now, let's move on to the next one. We are going to talk about one of my, my two favorite staffs in the game currently. We're going to talk about the... Purgative Staff first, and then we're going to talk about the Void Strike Staff, which is the King of Kings right now. Let, 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 let me show you. Okay, let me show you. Starting first and foremost with the Purgative Staff, I have a good one here. Um, this one has a terrible quell speed, but everything else is very high, which means I can show you how much devastating damage this staff can bring. The Purgative Staff is unique because it shoots... A light ball of flame that can go a fair amount of distance and this light ball of flame is an aoe attack it hits multiple targets as long as they touch the flame it's a little bit inaccurate but it will generally serve well with staggering opponents this quick left mouse button stagger works on pretty much anything in the game all right shoot it enough and they will get staggered this is why it's very useful and a lot of people use it for that purpose the charge up will spread a gout of flame that can also stagger but it staggers much more slowly if you take a look at the item breakdown and the weapon breakdown let's go attack breakdowns you'll see that this primary action has much higher stagger values than the secondary action the secondary action however will stack soul blaze constantly until things are roasted to death the more that you charge the purgative staff the more your flames do all right Take a look at this quick difference, okay? If I lightly charge the Purgative Staff, it doesn't really do very much, okay? Of course, it'll still burn several hordes to death, but if I properly charge the Purgative Staff, even without any talents, let's say we go for a full charge. If we go for a full charge, take note that the damage is already higher, all right, and the flame lasts longer, okay? You put on many more stacks of Soul Blaze with this. That being said, all right, one other thing to be uh, to take into account is the fact that if you crit hit with this with the uh, Purgative Staff, right, the crit will apply double the Soul Blaze stacks, all right, which is really, really good. It, instead of applying one stack of Soul Blaze, it applies double, which is fantastic. Most targets in the game, as long as you hit the Flak Armored area, will take a significant amount of damage, so they may not be staggered by the big gouts of flame, all right, They'll take a significant amount of damage, and with the right perks, the right builds, and, you know, good criticals, you can absolutely burn through hordes of enemies. This is with a gray staff. You won't do very much against Carapace Armored enemies, okay? But unyielding enemies are going to suffer a lot. Take note of that. You can, however, still stagger Carapace Armored enemies, although it may take a while, okay? It is possible to stagger them. You can stagger unyielding enemies. Let me just quickly prove that. If you were to keep doing this, your stat, they will eventually get staggered, all right? So it is possible to do that. Actually, wait. 
I haven't done this since the ancient times. Let me see. Oh, now you can stagger the crusher. I'm pretty sure I can do it to the mauler, though. Possibly because it just doesn't do very much stagger damage. I should confirm that. Let me reconfirm this right now. Okay, okay. So they did they did change some of the values, i.e. the maulers don't take as much stagger as before. Which makes sense because they're supposed to be huge melee threats that can wade into combat. This was actually changed a while back. I just, you know, ever since I did the old video version, uh, this should have changed. So although it does have a stagger value against Carapus armored enemies, as well as uh, flak armored enemies, the mauler and the... The Mauler and the Crusher in general will be very difficult to stack with the left mouse button. Instead, you are better off using um, your other perks, powers, or whatever to stagger them, okay? And of course, your Gout of Flame, as well, won't exact Like, it'll stagger them lightly, but then they get back into the animation pretty quickly, so it's not really going to stop them in any way, shape, or form. Same with the Crusher, okay? So just be aware of that. Like, it's not really gonna do very- Yeah, see, the Crusher, totally, totally immune, no matter how much you stack on him. He's just not gonna stagger, so it's best to kill him. Quickly. But for the, uh, Reapers, they do stagger really, really nicely. And they burn really nicely, too. See? One God of Flame and the Reapers almost burned half to death. You add perks in and, mm, they are dead. So, the perk staff is mostly used as a horde clear type staff. It is relatively close range, but if we want to talk about the maximum range on the perk staff, okay, you can hit it 11 meters. You can hit it. Can you hit it 12? Yes, you can. 13? Yes, you can. Okay, 14? Yes, you can. 15? Yes, you can. 16? Okay, 16 is your limit. Let's try with the uh, Gout of Flame. Okay, we're not seeing any additional damage come through, but if we go to 50 meters... Yep, we're seeing some of the damage tick through. So, 15 meters is the maximum range for the Purgative Staff, alright? Keep in mind, this is how long 15 meters is. Fairly long, okay? Fairly long. This is the length of 15 meters, so you can actually burn through hordes kind of like that very efficiently. You can just go like that, like that, burn through hordes. In the past, it used to be a very short-ranged weapon. Now, it's a pretty far-range far weapon that can do devastating amounts of damage to hordes. Of course, it's not going to be a, a full-on ranged weapon, unlike other staffs. But it does good work, and it helps you do what you need to do. That is to say, it helps you get rid of hordes really quickly. So that's what the Purgus Staff is for. It also offers a lot of damage against most armor types other than Carapace. So use it liberally when taking on opponents. It can stagger almost anything other than the Mauler and the Crusher like I showed you. So the Perk Staff is very useful. It's also why it's a very popular staff among a lot of the Psychers. Not just because you can roasty toasty your enemies, which is a lot of fun, but basically you can control entire hordes, groups of enemies. You can melt them all down and keep your team safe. This allows your team to focus on specials, elites, enemies, this is why it's so good. And this is why I'm generally against Perk Psychers using Brain Burst. But unfortunately, Perk is the best staff for using the Brain Burst build. I know many of you have asked for that. I promise you it will be out at some point. Okay, I, I will get it done. Um, Alright, last but not least, certainly not least, it is the staff that has received the biggest upgrade this season. Well, this update, I should say. The Void Strike staff is now the king of kings. Let's take a look. The best staff in the game right now, hands down, is the Void Strike staff. Why is this staff so damn good? Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay, the Void Strike staff, you know what? Let's use, um, I want one with a good blast radius as well. Yeah, this one's got terrible warp resistance, but high damage, charge rate, blast radius is good enough for demonstration purposes. Now... Upon inspecting it, what you will see is that the Void Strike Staff has the same basic attack as the Surge and Trauma, but the secondary action, my god, similar damage values across the board. Here's the best part. You can crit and you can hit a weak spot with the Void Strike Staff. You cannot do it on the perk. You cannot do it on the Surge. You cannot hit a weak spot on the Trauma with their secondary action. But by the gods, you can with the Void Strike, and this is why it's so good. 
All right, take a look at this. The Void Strike Staff offers the best damage in the game right now, and you have the capability of headshotting. All right, a well-placed shot will penetrate through several heads, enemies, and kill them all. This is why it is considered a highly powerful and dangerous staff. Fired correctly, you can rapid fire through enemies like so and do devastating amounts of damage. You can even rapid fire it like this if you are in an emergency situation, but I do not recommend it, okay? I actually recommend half charging. Half charging is the ideal for dealing with hordes, and of course full charges are better for dealing with armored targets. Do you want to see how this fares against a crusher? Check this out. If you aim for the head of the crusher, Bang, 1,200 damage, bang, and this is with a gray staff, bang. All right, do you see that? All right, I'm not just talking bang energy here. I'm talking insta-gibs on a lot of specials and elites if you hit the head, and this is with a gray staff. Imagine what I can do with one that is blessed up and set up for perfect kills. This is what I'm trying to talk about. This is what I mean. If you use the staff well, you can absolutely devastate hordes of enemies and get your win. Like I said, Half charging, not so good against these targets, but against bigger specials and elites, full charging works well, okay? Half charge, as you can see, knocks down one target. This is about 690, all right? It has a lot of good CC as well, by the way. But a full charge wipes them out, okay? Full charge, yeah? A full charge and a crit will almost take off a rager's entire head in damnation. This is how good this staff can be. So what you essentially want is a very good charge rate on the staff, which will allow you to absolutely devastate your opponents really quickly. Mauler, no problem. Okay, go for the head. Go for the head, check this out. Go for the head, 1,200 damage. You go for the body, still about 1,100 damage, all right? Uh, for crushers, body shot, 700. Head, 1,600 crit. What about, what about the bulwarks? The bulwarks, oh, they have their shield up, doesn't matter. I can blast straight through it. All right. Reapers. Oh, hey, Reaper. What's up? Let me just, uh, let me just hit you from a distance. Knock you off. You can't act. You can't. You will stop firing and you'll just get whacked. This is why the Void Strike staff is so good. Of course, you can still fire the normal attacks. Like, you can do something like that. You can do, like, this weird combo if you want. Which is hilariously weird combo, but do it too much and boom. All right. But yeah, this is a weird combo that some people may do because you can basically insta-cast a uh, basic attack after, but it will like cost you peril, so just be aware that you can blow up very quickly, yeah? So don't get too used to that. I very much prefer to just, if I really want to kill a target, I'll just go with that because it penetrates through anyway, and it's a much smarter tactic. However, some people do use the other weird tactic. I don't know why, but, you know, I hope this helps you understand exactly what the Void Strike staff is all about. The Void Strike staff has a nearly limitless range as well. It is absolutely insane. Here. Hamehameha! And it still hit the crusher at the end. See? So the Void Strike staff turns you into artillery. It is best used as long range artillery, okay? Especially if you want to deal truly devastating damage to your enemies. But if you end up having to use it at close range, it can still be a relatively good CC tool for most targets, okay? It is best used at range, but it can be used at close range as well. However, if you want to, if you find yourself engaging more in close range fights, Perg is the way to go. Void Strike, however, does come with the advantage of dealing good damage to all enemy armor types. So a lot of people are using the Void Strike staff right now because it is kind of the king of kings. It is the best staff in the game. There are few other staffs that are as good as this, all right? For now, there could be balancing adjustments in future. There could be things to change. So, you know, do your own testing. I cannot stress this enough. Do your own testing. Do not just take this video as gospel. Check it out. Check out what you think. Try out different combinations. See what suits you. All right. And of course, good builds for these things will always be available on this channel. So do check it out. And I promise you, every time we have new content, we will release it so that you guys get the best experience possible, okay? Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, seeing all the various staffs in the game. Again, I apologize for not uh, releasing the gun cycle build today. I just didn't have the spirit to do it, nor did I have the, um, nor did I have everything set up for it yet, but I will have that all done up tomorrow 
and you will get your Gunsiker build. After that, we're going to be working on yet another build, so look forward to it. For the time being, let me thank the people who have made all this possible. If you like my content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you do that, it not only helps me for free, but it lets you get in touch with my content frequently. Set the bell notification to all, and you will never miss a show, I promise you that. Okay? Thanking our top big wig supporters for October. Our top tipper is currently River Archer 124 Our top super chatter is Jason Kun. Our top super chatter list goes to River Archer 124 as well. And that is it for our October big wigs. If you want your name on the list, come by the stream, send a super chat, send a super thanks, you know, send a super sticker up to you. All right. And you can also choose to join as a channel member. And indeed, you will gain not only uh, a variety of benefits, but a shout out in every video. Starting right at the top, we have Big Chungus at the only fan level. We've got Death Dawning 982 at Plus Ultra for almost 19 months. We have Jerry Fast, Rogue Assassin, Zach MG, and Jason Kuhn as prestige robots. Thank you guys so much. In terms of our honored robots who get shout outs as well, we have Corey Ryu, Bob John Cube, Devin Lashin, Mookie Mocha, Rena, Chase Taylor, Nathan Strong, Lady Neo, Joey Danze, Sayed Asad, Coda CMF, Kami SMH, Conrad C, and Benjamin Savage. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Thank you to all of our cool and weird bots as well. I love you guys. I'll see you guys on the next video. Again, so sorry about, you know, today. But don't worry. Gunsiker's coming. Catch you soon.